What's up developers, I'm that one Unity dev, and today we're going to be looking at the simple way I implement UI into my game projects. Starting off, what even is UI? The term UI stands for User Interface, which is a broad term that encompasses all player interactive elements in your game. This can be graphical, which has its own term, GUI, or even input based, like a keyboard and mouse. Although UI is such a broad term, when we see the term UI in games, we tend to be referring to some sort of menu or HUD. It would be weird if I said a game's UI was bad, but I was actually talking about an input delay. So now that we know what UI is, let's take a look at some basic design philosophy and how we can take that into Unity to create some decent looking UI. When talking about anything to do with the graphic arts, you might have heard the expression, simplicity is key. This very much carries over into the games industry. When designing any sort of menu, try to simplify it to the best of your ability. A good place to start is flowcharts. I won't bore you on what a flowchart is, but essentially it's a visual representation of a system that follows some sort of sequence. A pen and paper with arrows also works, but a flowchart is easier to follow. After you have some sort of visual representation for your UI, next comes the challenging part conveying that information to the player in the simplest way possible. You want to avoid confusing the player and make everything very straightforward. The general rule is to design your UI so even a granny who hasn't played a game before still knows where to click. We could talk about color theory, why certain games UI feels better than others, and why round buttons are more inviting than square ones, but there are plenty of amazing resources online that cover all of this and more. I'd rather not parrot the information because it's much better to learn from the source. Trust me, the people in these videos have made it their life's mission to get people to press a button. So if anyone's qualified, it'd be them. With that being said, I'll leave a few links in the description for those of you who are interested. But without further ado, let's get to the good stuff. How to actually make UI on Unity. In an empty project, the first thing you're going to need is a canvas. I set mine to screen space camera, drag in the camera, and set the reference resolution to 1920 by 1080 As a side note, make sure your game window is also set to the proper resolution, as it might not look right. Now that your canvas is set up, we can start making some UI. The result of my Discord and YouTube poll shows that most of you want to see how to create a tab-based system, so I will create a simple scene with different tabs and some text. The first thing I did was change the background color because the basic blue is pretty gross and started creating some UI images, scaling them, recoloring them, and just getting a general tab style layout. The important thing to note here is that each separate tab is going to be governed by its own parent object. This is going to make things very simple later on. After everything was looking nice, I went ahead and I created a new text mesh pro object which will be changing through code to the title of each tab. Could just make one for every tab instead, but I wanted to do it this way to include as an example in the video. Next, you will notice that there are four black squares where the top bar is. The general idea is that when we click on one, it will activate the corresponding tab. Maybe you've used them before, maybe not, but event triggers are very powerful components for UI that give us a bunch of functionality. Rather than using the default button component or creating some other system from scratch, I feel like it would be more worth your time to learn about these awesome components that will completely change your UI workflow. After adding event triggers to all the black squares, I went ahead and added an on pointer down event to the first square. You can see that event triggers have all sorts of events like on pointer enter, exit, drag, scroll, and so many more. But the primary focus of today's video will be the on pointer down event. After adding the event, I can demonstrate what events are able to do by dragging the first tab into the slot and using the default gameObject.setActive function to enable the first tab. Now, in play mode, when I click on the first tab, you can see that it enables the main tab object. This is a very good demonstration of what we'll be doing to make the tab based system. We could easily add this to the additional tabs and call it done, but I think it'd be better to show you how event triggers work seamlessly with scripts. On my canvas object, I created a tab script, which will be responsible for turning on and off the tabs. In Visual Studios, you can see that I created a very simple script. This public function just disables all the tabs and enables whatever tab you selected. Back in Unity, I go ahead and drag the object that has the script into the event trigger slot. And now I can access the function that I created in the tab script. 
Since the function took an int, I can now say that the tab1 button will turn on the first tab. I then rinse and repeat this process until I have all the event triggers enabling the respective tabs. After assigning the tabs to the script, you can see that when I click on the black square, the tab enables and the rest disable. Now, it's as simple as making these black squares invisible and you can see the tab system works perfectly. We can now go back and change what the text says by creating a new function in our script and adding it to the same event triggers. Now, when we hit play, you can see each tab has its own title. Before we move on, we can see that before we click a tab, things aren't looking too good. This is a simple fix. We can recreate the first tab being open and use that as our default. I simply manually changed the title text to weapons and enable the first tab. Now it looks a lot better. To finish things off, you will notice in the top right, we can make a new black square and put it on top of the X. Next, we use the default set active function for our entire tab system and make it inactive on pointer down. Now when we hit play, we can use our tabs as normal and when we are done, hit the X and the whole menu closes. And with that, our tab system is complete. With this sort of layout, it doesn't really matter what UI you put in each tab. You can also use even more event triggers for specific elements and even utilize the pointer enter and exit for hovering. With that being said, I really hope you enjoyed today's video and maybe even learned a thing or two. I hope you consider subscribing and even joining the discord. I appreciate every single one of you and maybe we can even hit a thousand subs before the new year. But that's all the time we have for this video. Hope you guys have a great holiday and thanks for staying until the end. Bye.